Good morning. So I actually have a lot of jam-packed stuff happening this week and I was just thinking that maybe you guys should come along to see what it's like to work in a whole week as an environmental engineer. This is basically what I do. Right now I just woke up today's Monday morning. It's about 6 a.m. I don't want to go to my facility today so I'll just be working from home. Today isn't the exciting part but it's just it's gonna be probably Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday that you'll see more action. On days that I work from home, it's not really too exciting besides just me emailing people. I really just want to document like the exciting part of my work. I know I did post like a day in a life of video and that was just really one day when I was working from home and it wasn't too exciting also. But I want to expand that to a whole week now. Just be prepared for unexciting, uneventful things happening on some days and you know more exciting things happening on other days. And the more exciting things are happening when I'm actually on base. So just be on the gap for that. All right, so again, it is early morning. It's like about 6 a.m. There's no action. I don't even need to like log into my computer until maybe like eight or nine. But for the most part, I don't really do anything until like around that time. So I'm just gonna prepare myself and then I'll see you in a few hours. So at about 8 a.m., that's when I actually start to do work. Here I'm just turning on my laptop. This is the official government laptop and it is pretty slow. So as you might know, government work is pretty slow. I'm only required to go to work on site two or three days a week. So on Mondays and Fridays, that's when I typically don't go to work. That means for this video, you're probably not going to see too much excitement on days that I work from home. Here, I'm just checking my email and there's really not much to go through because typically on Friday afternoon, that's when everyone finishes work. So between the weekends, no one is there to email you back. I only have like three or four emails that I missed because that was when they emailed me after I left work. On the days that I work from home, I don't really move too much, so I don't really eat a big breakfast. If not, I don't eat at all. I typically just wait until maybe brunch time or lunch time to actually eat something. After I eat a snack or a small meal, that's when I go back to work. I might work for like another hour or so before I take off and prepare for lunch. The good thing about working from home is that no one micro manages you, so I can actually take my time preparing a big meal or a big lunch without anyone, you know, looking over me. Today I made a pasta salad. After lunch I go back to work, just checking any emails that might have popped up while I was at lunch. But overall not a hard day. Honestly, I finish around 2 p.m. so I don't even have to work the whole 9 to 5 job. Because I've noticed at my work, people just stop working at like 2 p.m. So I do too. Honestly, after 2 p.m. I just do whatever I want. Alright, now it's Tuesday. The day where I actually show up on site at my facility. So on the days that I actually show up to work, I eat a big breakfast. It's because I don't pack lunch. So what I mean today is just oatmeal with a spoon of peanut butter. I know it's pretty bland, but it's heavy enough for me to not be hungry throughout the whole day until I get back home. Peanut butter isn't my favorite flavor or anything. I just know that it's good enough to last me the whole day. And I don't like driving to work. I take the train, so I'm just here taking public transportation to my work. I can't show you too much around my facility because it is technically secretive and it is government work. Again, starting off my day, just checking my email before a meeting at 8.30. We have meetings every single week on Tuesdays, and they always start at 8.30, so no matter what time you get there, even if you're there early, there's really not much you can do because at 8.30 you have to do something else. Honestly, some of these meetings are pointless and everyone hates it. We just endure it because we have to go and attend the meetings. Some of these meetings can last from 8.30 up until like 10 o'clock. If the meetings do last till like 10, then people will just like stop working at that point. They take their lunch break after the meeting, so that's when you know not much work will be done that day. After the meeting, I am free to do whatever I want to run my program, but typically I just hide and run away to my shed where I check the hazardous waste. Because I already had a shipment come out last week, then it is pretty empty today, and I don't foresee it getting full anytime soon. Then I just casually walk around shops and other buildings just to check their hazardous waste. But it's really just an excuse for me to leave my office and walk around the base and get some exercise. So the exciting part for my job is just walking around base, seeing any random stuff, and I guess dumpster diving sometimes. Here you can see me lifting up the lids of these trash cans, just checking for anything illegal, anything dangerous, or anything shiny. I know you might be thinking this is like scavenging or stealing, but it is not. I have full authority to be as efficient as possible to run my program. After a brisk walk, I go back to my office and actually my friend today wanted to go do a job walk at a different site, so I just tag along with her. Here we're just following the contractor to build a new runway. And these are for civilians and military families living in government family housing. And it's right next to the beach, so it was really nice. After that job walk, I just went home. 
another short day ending at about 2 p.m. I had to meet with someone at 8 a.m., so I'm here early. Stopped by to take a bathroom selfie, and then went on my way to the gas station. Every 30 days, we have to do a monthly inspection for the gas station just to make sure that it's still safe to pump, nothing's rusted, all repairs are logged and everything. So me and the contractor, we just did our quick inspection. If you're ever curious to see what's inside the kiosk next to a gas station, here's what it looks like. At least the monitoring system that's used to check all these systems and alarms. This monthly inspection normally takes about like 30 minutes or an hour. It's pretty quick. There's not much that I can do really. It's more so that the technician or the contractor knows what to do. After he does his thing, then I go back to my shed and I separate some potentially hazardous waste. These hazardous waste are really just batteries, so they're universal waste. But technically in California, they are hazardous waste. It's pretty therapeutic because all I do is just separate the batteries based on this category, so what it's made out of, alkaline, nickel, or lithium, for example. I don't have to think too hard when I do this, so it's just me turning on my music or the podcast and just mindlessly separating these. I do this to save costs for when we actually have to dispose of these hazardous waste. If I didn't do this, then the contractors or our third-party vendors would have to do it, and then that would cost an extra hour's labor on our bill. I finished around 12 p.m., so I closed up for the day. I went back to my office and just sort of waited until it was time for me to safely go home without being questioned or suspicious. Also note that I'm still checking my emails all throughout the day. It's not that I'm just doing like one hour of work and then like four hours of play. I'm still on constant alert and I respond to emails when I receive them. It's just sometimes people don't email me, so I'm sort of just waiting for someone to respond. But yeah, that's my work. And now it's Thursday. So I'm required to go to my work two or three times a week. But I have something scheduled for tomorrow, Friday. That means that I won't be going to work today and I get to decide that. So I'll be working from home today. I normally wake up at 6 a.m. just because I'm so used to it, but I don't really have to work until 8 a.m. So I just do my stretches and at 8 a.m. is when I actually turn on my computer. Here you can see how little emails I receive, even if I leave early the day before. Some of them are really just even announcements, so they're not even emails that I can reply to. They're just like spam mail. After replying to those emails, then I cook some food, because I know cooking rice will take some time, so I cook rice before lunch. In the meantime, I have my own personal laptop on and my work government laptop on, just in case someone does want to micromanage me. But here I'm just eating some baby carrot snacks and I'm watching some news. So what I do typically is I check my email from eight to nine. So that's about one hour's worth of work. Typically in one hour I can finish replying to all those emails. Then I would take a full one hour lunch and then check again after lunch. Here I'm eating an iceberg lettuce. I don't know how you guys eat it, but I just eat it as is. I just wash it, peel off one layer of the lettuce and just stick it in my mouth. I don't know why, but I really enjoy eating it like this. Some people think it's really weird, but that's just how I do it. And here I'm just peeling off some more layers and adding it to my pasta salad that I made on Monday. So again, after lunch, I just check my email to make sure that I reply to everything before the end of the day. As you can see, there are like no emails. So sometimes work is really slow. And that about wraps up for this slow Thursday. Finally, the last day of the week, Friday, I had something planned because I wanted to end the week strong. I scheduled an inspection this day so I can show you, I guess, the big stuff that happens. Turns out our contractor came in really early, one hour early actually, so I didn't get to film that much. Here I'm actually driving and rushing to get to the place. So what we were doing today was our semi-annual vapor recovery test. Now I'm not like a gas station expert or anything. So here's how a vapor recovery system works without getting too much into the sciences. The primary function of vapor recovery units is to remove the vapors that collect inside sealed hydrocarbon tanks. And I'm just reading this off of Google. So what they'll be doing is they'll be testing every single dispenser with each type of gas, to make sure that it falls within a certain range just to make sure that the gas is not leaking into the environment. So this could be a really long day or a really short day depending on how fast and how accurate our test results are. Again, I can't say that I know every single proponent, but I can see why they're there to do the test. So for example, if you're filling up your car, you can definitely smell the gas. It goes from a liquid to a gaseous vapor. What this vapor recovery unit does is that it would capture that vapor and recycle that back into the tank so it doesn't leak out into the environment. That's basically the whole concept in a nutshell. Luckily, all of our numbers passed, so it was a pretty short day. We finished around 12 p.m. noon, and because it was like a weekend holiday, I got to go home early. So this is what it was like to be an environmental engineer for a week. I'm not gonna lie, my work is pretty chill. This is a realistic work week for my job. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.